Hi, welcome back. Uh, part five of the CCNA IP addressing uh, sort of lectures. Um, in part four, we looked at subnet masking and we saw how the computers work out where the network and host portion of the address is. We worked out that we could, the computer could work out the subnet address by doing a logical AND between the IP address, the host address, and the mask applied to it. And by doing a logical AND between them, we would come up with the subnet address. One other thing we can work out is we can work out the broadcast address. The address, that means if you send a packet to this particular address, it goes to everybody on that subnet. We know from earlier lessons that if the host portion of the address is set to all ones, then that is the broadcast address on that particular network. So let's just take a look at this then. Here we have a subnet, 172.16.0.0. Uh, and if we set the host portion to all ones, in other words, the last 16 bits set to all ones, and then include the network portion of the address when we talk about it, you can see that if we convert the two to back together, both subnet portion of the address and host portion of the address all set to ones, that we get a broadcast address of 172.16.255.255. If I send anything to that address, it'll go to every host on network 172.16.0.0. OK, if we've got the subnet address and the broadcast address, then we can tell what the host range, the applicable host range for this particular subnet is. It's one after the subnet address and one before the broadcast address. Therefore, the host range for this network is 172.16.0.1, one after the subnet address, all the way up to 172.16.255.254, one before the broadcast address. So just by being given the IP address and subnet mask, we can work out the subnet address, the broadcast address, and the host range applicable for that particular subnet. OK, let's do it again. Same address, 172.16.2.17. Uh, different mask, though, this time, 255.255.255.0. We do the logical AND between the two addresses, and we get a subnet address of 172.16.2.0 this time. We know that if we set the host portion to all ones and then add in the subnet portion of the address, that will give us the broadcast address. So the broadcast address is 172.16.2, that's the subnet portion of the address, 255, that's the host portion of the address all set to ones. So our broadcast address is 172.16.2.255. Anything in between those is the host range. So the host range is from 172.16.2.1 all the way up to 172.16.2.254. And let's do a little bit harder one. This time we're going to go right into the last octet in the address. So we've got our same IP address again, 172.16.2.17. The mask we're going to apply to this one is a strange one. It's 255.255.255.240. We did our logical AND as we did in the subnet portion of this, uh, this uh, course. Then you can see the subnet address is 172.16.2.16. The broadcast address is the host portion all set to ones. And then we represent the entire address again, but this time with the host portion set to ones. So our broadcast address will be 172.16.2.31.16 is the subnet address, plus there's another a bit set in the 8-bit position, a 4-bit position, 2-bit position, and 1-bit position. That's another 15 addresses on, if you like. So 16 plus 15, 31. So our broadcast address is 172.16.2.31. Everything in between that is a valid host on that subnet. So our valid host range is from 172.16.2.17 all the way up to 172.16.2.30. So here's a little subnet mask exercise. Um, first question we've got for you is we've got an address, which is 203.200.10.60, with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.248. And what we need to know is, first of all, what class address it is, what the subnet portion of the address is, and what the broadcast address is. So first thing we can do is we can say, OK, uh, look at the first octet. This is a class C address. It starts 203. So that means it's a class C. It's in the range 192 to 223. 
What about the subnet portion of the address? Well, we're going to have to do what the computers do. We're going to convert them into binary, and then we're going to do a logical AND between the two. Um, but just by looking at the address, first of all, you can see that 203.200.10.60 with a mask of 255.255.255.248, well, the first three octets are going to be part of the subnet address. It's going to be 203.200.10.something. It's the dot .something we don't know because it's got that weird part of the mask to it. So it's only the dot .something that we need to have a look at. So we know it's 203.200.10.something. So what we're going to do is convert the dot .something into binary. So we're going to take our binary number 60 and convert that into, uh, sorry, our decimal number 60 and convert that into binary. So that gives us a binary address of 00111000. Then we're going to take a mask, dot .248, and we're going to convert that into binary as well. As you can see, that gives us five ones followed by three zeros. And then we can do our logical AND between the two. So we do our logical AND between those two uh, addresses. We get zero and one is zero, zero and one is zero, one and one is one, one and one is one, one and one is one, zero and zero is zero, zero and zero is zero, zero and zero is zero. So that gives us the subnet portion of the address as the last octet. If we convert that back into uh, decimal, we get a subnet address of dot .56. So we, now we know that our subnet address is 203.200.10.56. Okay, next thing to do is draw a line between the network and the host. You can see by looking at the mask that it goes five ones, then it stops, and then it goes five, three zeros. So we know that the mask, the network portion of the address, is at the, the, the point the ones turn to zeros in the mask. So we can draw a line down there. In other words, we've got three bits of host space. And we know that to find our broadcast address, all we've got to do is fill up that host space with ones. So let's do that. So there's exactly the same last octet of this address with the subnet portion, 00111, followed by the host portion set to all ones. 111, the host portion, gives us a broadcast address of dot .63. So we've answered the question. We know it's a class C address. We know the subnet is dot .56, and we know the broadcast address is dot .63. All we have to do now to find the applicable host range is to use the address one after the subnet and one before the broadcast, and that gives us our host range if we need to find that. So the host range is from dot .57 all the way up to dot .62. Okay. Um, That'll do for the moment. Uh, if you're interested, if you like any more, I can give you some more. I can tell you some Cisco tricks uh, because obviously you haven't got the time to work out these sort of problems as a computer does. So there's a couple of Cisco tricks. Um, give me some more interest. I'll put some more stuff up. Yeah. Don't forget to visit our website, www.pancho.co.uk. Uh, see you next time.